Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing all right. Uh, so I have a couple topics I want to talk about today, both in regards to limited run games. Now, a few days ago, they were getting ripped to shreds. Now, I'm not making this video to trash them or anything like that. I have no problem with limited run games. I've purchased all of their Vita releases since day one. And from what I recall, I've never had an issue with any of my orders. I still buy from them the occasional Switch or PlayStation 4 release, and I think they make some really cool, well thought out limited editions. But these two issues that cropped up recently, I thought were pretty interesting. And I wanted to have a discussion about these things to find out what you guys think. And I think these are some things we can all learn from and grow, including limited run games themselves. So the first topic I wanted to talk about today is regarding the issue with the upcoming release One Step from Eden for the Nintendo Switch. Limited Run Games just announced that pre-orders for this game will begin on September 10th, which is right around the corner. Now, here is the problem. The game is available digitally. MSRP is 20 US dollars, and actually it's on sale right now for $14 in North America. Now, this game has just about every language option you can imagine, but they removed only one language option for the physical Japanese release, English. That's right, you've got just about every single language option in there except English. But the digital version does have English, it always has. So this was purposefully removed from the physical Japanese release of the game. Now that Limited Run Games has announced this for physical release in North America, we find out why English was removed. It was so that the Limited Run Games physical release could be the only physical version with English support. Now, people are obviously angry with this because a lot of people that live outside of the United States like to play their games in English. But it's not always very easy or cheap for everyone to buy and import games from Limited Run. So they will a lot of times buy an international version from PlayAsia or some other online retailer. Now Jordan from Switchwatch posted this on Twitter. If anyone has a shred of decency, they would do well not to purchase this. Taking out English from the Japanese physical release to save for Limited Run games is awful practice. Language exclusivity is the lowest of the low. Now, to be fair, I don't see this comment from Jordan as an attack on limited run games. He's just telling you not to buy this particular game. He's not telling us to boycott limited run games completely, and he isn't saying or implying that limited run games had anything to do with this decision. But a few people did take it that way. So, of course, Josh Fairhurst from Limited Run Games was quick to jump in here. He says that developers earn more money selling their games through Limited Run than they do through traditional retail channels. Limited Run doesn't tell the developers how to handle their releases. They don't even get involved with that. But developers might naturally be incentivized to encourage more Limited Run game sales since they make more money on those releases versus other physical releases. Now he probably should have just left it at that, but he goes on to complain about how people enjoy casting them as villains, and then he tells us about how great Limited Run Games really is, and then he tells us about how bad all of their competitors are. And I love how Joshua French from East Asia Soft jumps in here and corrects Fairhurst on his overgeneralization of all their competitors. He's like, no, East Asia stuff doesn't do that. Okay, so to clarify, Limited Run Games didn't tell the developer to withhold English language from the Japanese physical release. This was a decision that was made by either the publisher or developer. Obviously, there was some monetary incentive here to do this, but it wasn't Limited Run Games' decision. Now, last I heard, Limited Run Games pays their developers the same amount of money per copy that they would make if the game was sold digitally. Now, typically, if a game sold for $20 digitally, then the developer would make $14 off of that, or 70%, which is the lion's share. That's why Limited Run Games always cost so much more than the digital versions. They pay the developers that full amount, so they have to pay a pretty big chunk to the developer, 
and they have to pay Sony or Nintendo their share, and of course they have to pay their own employees too. So the costs here really do add up. And that's why most physical releases, the developers don't actually make much because typically everyone takes a pay cut to get a physical version produced. Also, I would like to mention the Japanese physical version didn't ever release with the English language option on it. Some people got confused with the verbiage and thought it was removed with a game update patch. No, it was removed before it went on to the game card. So unfortunately, having an English option on the Japanese physical release is not as simple as just refusing an update. Now that being said, I don't think this is Limited Run's fault, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't boycott this release either. By all means, if you don't support the practice of withholding language options, don't buy the game. In fact, even us talking about it right now is probably going to influence some other developer down the road to reconsider withholding language options, knowing that some of us will choose not to support this practice. The more we talk about it, the more people that vote with their wallets, the greater the likelihood that this practice doesn't repeat itself. And if it ends up giving limited run games enough grief, they might even discourage the practice themselves. Now, if you're from North America, it would probably cost you more to import the Japanese release than just buying the limited run release anyway. And some people just really don't care about all the details and just want the game. So I understand some of us just aren't going to care either way. And there's others that are going to boycott it anyway out of principle. But in case you guys were wondering, I didn't plan on buying this game in the first place, so I'm just still not buying it. In fact, I didn't even play it yet. Maybe, maybe I'll pick up the digital version someday if I hear enough good things about it. I just don't go out and buy every single limited physical release anymore, just the ones that I really want. Now honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if the developer patched English language support into the physical Japanese release after the pre-order sells out at limited run, but uh, who knows. Also, as a side note, I don't know if this matters to any of you or not, but the game is only getting a standard release from Limited Run, so there's no collector's edition. So that's the situation with One Step from Eden. Let me know what you guys think, especially those of you that were planning on buying it. Does this affect your decision at all? Do you think Limited Run games should discourage this practice? Sure, they may not be encouraging it, but should they be discouraging it? Anyway, so moving on, here is the other topic that got limited run games in hot water recently. Um, but it has, I guess, sort of a happy ending, I suppose. So there was a collector's edition of Shiren the Wanderer for PC available from limited run games. It was supposed to include the game on disc as well as other goodies. Now, people just started receiving these recently and well, it didn't come with the physical game as promised in the description, which again tests their slogan, forever physical. So one person had complained to Limited Run that it came with a Steam code instead of the game on disc. Then immediately after that, the listing on the Limited Run game store was silently changed without notice to remove the mention of the physical disc and instead list that it includes a Steam code. Why would they change the description like that after pre-orders were already closed? That seems really shady to me. It's one thing to change it to say something like, sorry, we have substituted a Steam code instead, but to change it in a way that suggests as if it always said Steam code makes it seem like they're trying to trick people. Like they're hoping that people will go back to the listing page and read it and think to themselves, oops, I didn't see it said Steam code. I guess that's my mistake. Now this was eventually posted publicly to Twitter and Fairhurst responded. He says that they didn't sell enough copies to justify a physical release and that he was planning to email people, but he got too busy. He told at least one person that they would need to submit a support ticket to get help for this issue. Uh, one person says that they were offered a $10 refund for the inconvenience. And at one point, Fairhurst said that he would look into getting jewel cases produced. But I think what people really wanted here was that DRM free copy on disc. Someone had reported that the limited edition was basically the same as the Switch version with an opening just the right size for a Switch game case, but a Steam code was sitting in the middle instead. So it wasn't even fitted for a jewel case. 
Now, ultimately, this isn't what people wanted. They signed up for a DRM-free copy of the game on PC. And look, I understand being busy, making mistakes, being overwhelmed, but this looked like they were trying to cover it up, at least at first. Like, because there were so few people, maybe they could just sweep it away and solve the issues one by one to whomever submitted a support ticket and then assume that anyone who doesn't submit a support ticket is probably just fine with a Steam code. But I don't know. That's just what it looks like to me. Again, I'm not a detective. Totally possible that they would have gotten around to contacting everyone individually, even if nobody complained. It's possible, but... Uh... I kind of doubt it. Anyway, they eventually decided that the 60, yes, apparently only 60 people ordered the PC version. These 60 people that ordered the Shiren Collector's Edition on PC would get a full refund. The description page has been updated again to reflect this. Now it actually explains the substitution. Hopefully nobody should need to submit a support ticket at this point. Although, I would suggest if any of you are one of the 60 people that ordered it and haven't received a refund yet, go ahead and submit a support ticket anyway, just in case, you know, they get too busy. So I'm glad that got resolved. I don't think anyone at Limited Run had any bad intentions. I really think they were hoping to not make a big deal about it and just help anyone that submitted a support ticket individually based off what their needs are. Some people probably would have been happy with a $10 refund. Others might have been happy with a printed jewel case. And then there are people like me that probably would have taken the $10 but just not have been happy about it. If someone does me dirty, I don't usually put up a fight. Instead, I just don't ever support them anymore. Which really isn't good because it doesn't do either of us any favors. But I know there are many others like me and I think, you know, businesses sometimes don't realize how much they're losing when they think they're saving a few bucks by not making things perfectly right. I think it's important that this stuff comes forward. I think it's important to talk about because it can help them as a business grow and mature. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone learns from their mistakes, but not everyone is willing to implement what they've learned. But I think Limited Run Games has the desire and will grow from that. They are still young but I think the team over there has what it takes and at least in my personal experience, they've always come through in the end. Anyway guys, let me know what you think about any of this or feel free to share your own experiences with Limited Run Games. That's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.